Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Beverly Toastmaster Club. Today is our online member mentoring session. And I want to start with the, our Toastmaster Club mission. We provide a spotted and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self confidence and personal growth. And there is our core value that we embrace on integrity, respect, service, and excellence. And there is our online meeting etiquette. So mute yourself when you're not speaking. And today there will no there will be no pool for boarding. And the rest I will give you some time to read. And I believe you are familiar with more for them. Okay, the last one, our online event statements. So I want to emphasize on that. It will be recorded and if you want to uh, publish in our social media. So if you want to get involved, you can turn off your camera or you can leave the meeting and watch the recording later. Thank you. With that, I will pass over to our Toastmaster of the day. Kayleen, thank you, Philip. Well done. Thank you. First time being Sergeant at Arms at one of our online meetings. Great start to the meeting. So well done and thank you for your preparation beforehand. Welcome thank everybody you. to our third member mentoring online session we're running these monthly on the third tuesday of the month uh, as an opportunity to provide our members with an additional speaking uh opportunity for a prepared speech but also to do the panel moderator role or the toastmaster of the meeting role as a manage an online meeting project uh this also benefits our members in our clubs and those that are watching our recordings because there's uh, education value in what our speakers are sharing tonight. And obviously with the panel discussion, we get to learn a little bit more about the topics they're talking about as well. Uh, I would like to welcome all our members here tonight and I would like to acknowledge our guests uh, Karen, who attended our last meeting and is joining us tonight as well. Uh, thank you for our last minute uh, changes to the agenda. We do have uh, Mandy stepping in as speech evaluator four, and uh, we do have a plan for Manish for speaker evaluator three if Venu is unable to make it tonight. Uh, but apart from that, our agenda is we have our three speakers. We have John that will be doing lessons learned as a protege. We have Kiru, who will be talking about the benefits of being a mentor. We have Joe, who will be talking about coaching the line in the sand. And then we have Manish, who will do a panel uh, discussion with our three speakers. Following that, we will have our four evaluators. Uh, at this stage, it's Grace, Surinder, Manish, and Mandy. So let's get started. Our first speaker tonight is our club president, and he is working on the uh, mentoring path, but also he is doing Motivational Strategies Level 2 Introduction to Mentoring which is a required project on all the paths. So all of us will do this every time we do a path, one of, one of the 11 learning paths. And uh, he is a member of a couple of years now. Uh, he has really accelerated from what I've seen because of being an enthusiastic protege. And he's also taken on mentor roles. John, lessons learned as a protege. Lessons learned as a protege. Please welcome John. Thank you, Carleen, for that introduction. Tonight, what I want to share with you is the importance 
uh, of the the importance and the learnings that I've have gained through being a protege. <clears throat> In my opinion, the mentor protege relationship is probably one of the most important relationships you will have. Whilst not having a mentor doesn't necessarily mean it's got, you, you're not going to be able to survive in a new situation, but it always makes it easier if you've got a mentor to help you walk you through, particularly in like a workplace sort of setting um, or if you're exper going into a completely new journey in your life. Going back many years ago, um, many of you know I'm a kindergarten teacher. When I started teaching, there was no mentoring. Basically, I went from being an assistant in one room, moving to a different centre, becoming the teacher in, in a room, and there was no guidance given. Yes, I'd done the training, and that's one of the points I want, want to make. As a, as, as a protege, yes, you might have a qualification behind you, but it's always perfect to have someone who's lived the job or the role and or in Toastmaster, someone who's been doing the program to be able to show you how it actually works in the real world because a piece of paper does not mean that you can just walk in and do the job. The skipping forward, I'm not going to talk about that much about that part of my journey many years down the track, I joined an organization called Freemasonry. And I actually had some really good mentors during this time. One of them was my father-in-law at the time, who would take me through just a little nitty gritty things to help me work out exactly how things were done, um, the way we should stand and all those sort of things. Here, I always had heaps and heaps of answers, uh, questions, and he would answer them to the level that I was at. Um, that organisation has different rules. Um, the mentor, him, and there was a couple of other mentors who actually supported me in specific roles that I was doing in, in that lodge. And so they would take me through more, the other mentors, so I had multiple mentors, would take me through the physical, you know, the activities that I had to do, how I had to walk, how I had to hold things, um, the different steps because it, it is very, very, very structured. And the other thing that I gained from that experience was that all the the mentors, they would always just give a bit of feedback at the end about what, you know, what I'd done well and also what I could improve on. But the biggest part that I took from that part of my journey is personal responsibility for your own learning. Moving forward, well, then again, it wasn't really moving forward because this was all happening concurrently in a big part of my life. Spirituality has been a huge aspect of my life as long as I can remember. And I've had some amazing mentors in this field. One being my grandmother. What the mentors did in, in those areas, they, they listened to my views and gave me feedback, um, allowed me to talk about the ideas that I had. And they, you know, there was no judgment. They allowed me to talk it out. And over time, some of those stuck and others evolved into other things. They helped me to understand different perspectives because I really... That was something I needed, you know, to be coaxed because I could become very fixated on my own views to be able to bring in the views that other people had was, was a really good way for myself to grow. And then each of these mentors, so my grandmother, um, I've had a couple of teachers. I'm, I'm working with the president of the Seaford Church at the moment quite closely and the other thing that they do is when I'm experiencing something, they will talk about how they, like they're part of their journey and where they face the similar sort of challenges or issues that I'm having and what they've done to 
resolve those situations. But again, it was personal responsibility for your own learning. Then came Toastmasters. And when I, I've got to say, when I started Toastmasters, the club I was in, there was no mentoring. There was no mentor um, program. Very much, I just jumped in and, like my early childhood, jumped in the deep end and swam. Luckily, I was able to ask Kayleen because um, Kayleen had just moved home around that time. So I got a lot of information from Kayleen who helped me get onto pathways and start working it through. So firstly, I was just learning that myself, the pathways, but then the acceleration really came when Kayleen and I started talking. She started explaining to me how I could take things that I'm doing in my own life, so work or at church or wherever else, and fit those into a project. And so that helped me to understand that, oh, I don't have to do it linear. I can very much move through pathways, very fluid, and accelerate my own learning and um, and my own progress. So in um, <clears throat> with having like Kayleen and other um, experienced members, both at my first club and at Berwick, I've been able to approach those people and ask, you know, different questions about um, ways that we do things or how I can a, a address a different part of my speech, um, delivering abilities and all that sort of thing. But still, it came back to that personal responsibility for your own learning. And that's the main thing that I have really discovered through my own journey as a protege. Yes, my mentors have been there to give advice support um and even help me get those real nitty-gritty but it really still came back to if i wasn't doing the work i was going to get nowhere so that personal responsibility and that's a key thing for me in my own life um being able to share the journey with an experienced member is a huge support and being able to understand your journey as well as keeping yourself accountable for what you do plan to do. And with that, I'll pass back to you, Kayleen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, John. And before I uh, comment on John's presentation, I just do want to make sure that Joe, you have seen chat, and I'm giving you a minute warning. You're actually going to be up next because Kiru is a uh, held up and needs to be our third speaker so prep warning that that that's my warning for you see short time no time to stress john thank thank you for that that wonderful presentation and for sharing with us uh your experience as a protege not just in toastmasters and and that's something really important for all of us we, we're in toastmasters as a place to develop these skills Yes, we want to become great Toastmasters, but it's more than that. We want to become great humans and we want to be able to take what we learn here and use it beyond. So thank you for bringing your beyond story into us because we want to keep reminding ourselves that it is about how we can take our skills outside of Toastmasters. Uh, that's one of our whys for being here. Uh, please, if anybody's got any questions, that they would like uh, Manish to include during the panel discussion, you can send him uh, a private chat now with some of the questions uh, for, for John around that topic. So as I just hinted at, we are flipping the agenda because we're flexible in Toastmasters and that's what we do. So our next speaker is going to be Joe and Manish, if you can, uh, take on the role as her evaluator. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Joe is, oh, here comes Kira again. Joe is a relatively new member. You, she joined this year um, and is really quickly uh, getting into the club spirit and becoming a value member. Uh, what some of you may not know is Joe is a coach uh, beyond Toastmasters 
And I thought it would be really good that we invite her into this panel because we're talking about protégés and mentor and coaching is, is similar but different. And I thought, hey, let's let's hear from a real coach about coaching so that we can uh, gain an insight into that. So today, uh, please welcome Joe. coaching the line in the sand, the line in the sand, Joe. Thank you, Keely. Uh, in our national sport in Wales, where I'm from, is rugby union. In our household back in the day, my parents were huge rugby union supporters and the term coach was used rather a lot, particularly around the times when my dad's rugby team lost. For example, the things that were said were, the coach should have done this, the coach should have done that. And what on earth was the coach thinking? It wasn't perhaps the best first experience of what personal development coaching actually is. Fast forward many years later in 2018, I ended up in a personal development event in Melbourne. At this time in my life, I was very stuck. I felt trapped in a life that I didn't like. Having recently moved to Australia from the UK, I had no friends. I didn't work because we had decided that my role would be to get our three boys settled in school. Meanwhile, my husband loved his work in the city. He left home every morning, enjoyed city life, and he was thriving. On the other hand, back here in Beaconsfield, my three teenage boys did not like Melbourne one bit. I resented my husband for having a great time at work, grief stricken for leading my, leaving my dad, family and friends and completely felt a sense of loss for my life. I couldn't go into Woolies Beaky without having a breakdown bursting into tears in the store. And by gosh, I was glad that in Australia, wearing sunglasses was normal indoors. <laughs> I was exhausted, severely overwhelmed, and the anxiety I was experiencing drained me. I would have two hour nana naps in the afternoon, and I would still wake up exhausted, dazed, and longing to go back to bed. That moment when I was sat in the room in 2018, I realized I had work to do. Even more than that, becoming a coach was actually a way that people, that I could help people from moving from feeling stuck like I did. So first off, I drew a metaphorical line in the sand. Secondly, I had to get around what was I was called uh, what I thought was a rugby union coach and what was the difference between a personal development coach. And here are some of the reasons why I love coaching so much five years later on as my career as a transformation coach. A coach is someone who is trained to help facilitate the personal and or professional growth of individuals either on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group setting. There is structure to a session, a sense of curiosity, and led with an intention which is set by the client. The focus is around helping the client move forward through making decisions when they came up, come up against challenges or setbacks. The coach knows the client will always have the answers. In my experience, being on both sides of the coin as a coach and client, when a coach tells the answer, a client, and when a coach tells the client the answer, you almost disempower them. It is a million times more effective to let the coachee come to the answer themselves through curious questioning and perhaps maybe sitting on your hands a little bit. 
For example, when I was coaching a lady who was very aware she was a people pleaser and she would rant around this all the time, informing me that she was always saying yes and she felt guilty and she could see herself, but it just didn't land. She was paying lip service to being a people pleaser, but she didn't quite get it. Then all of a sudden she had an aha moment. She said, oh, I get it. I'm being the people pleaser. I could see her facial expression, her body language. She just relaxed because the notion of who she was being had landed. Truly a moment to treasure. As a coach, it is my duty to see the client as a whole, complete, enough, loved and worthy when we as coaches see our clients as this, then this has a massive impact on their behavior and how the client shows up in the world around them. I practice intention-based coaching because we start in each session with a clear intention. An intention is a personal commitment that has its roots in the now and it is only concerned with who you are being. And this clarifies the direction of a session, directs the client's thinking. It helps them focus on what they want and where they are going. It gives a session purpose so we know how they can get there. And it teaches them to focus on where they are going instead of circling around in the current state. There are times when a coach may step into a role as a mentor and this is when the coach has identified a gap in the knowledge base of a client. So for example, I often mentor in nervous system regulation because it's like swimming, right? You can read your manual on how to swim, but until you get in the water, you don't know how to swim. It takes time, practice, experience, and wisdom. I chose drawing a line in the sand because your client metaphorically draws a line in the sand, a marker, for what has happened in their life thus far, not erasing the past, but acknowledging it for what it is and what it has been. And now to focus on ways to move forward through their life, step by step, moment by moment. Personally, my life today would not be what it is without coaching. And I am deeply grateful to you fellow Toastmasters for allowing me to share my perception and experience of coaching. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Oh, that, that was lovely. And I love your passion for coaching. And you, you reminded me of that difference between the coaching and also like the coaching for the rugby union sport. It is so different to being a personal development coach. Uh, and, and I kind of see the coaching as a football a little bit more like a mentor because they're telling, they're guiding, they know. So, yeah, thank you for shedding that light today. Uh, if anybody has any questions directly for Joe, uh, you can put them in chat and send them through to Manish and he'll be able to uh, see if he can weave them in to our panel discussion. Oh, now we're we're moving forward and we have our next speaker is Kiru and Sarinda is evaluating uh, Kiru. Uh, so Kiru, wow. What can I say about Kiru? Kiru is our club growth director here in District 73. Uh, District 73 looks after Victoria South Australia and Tasmania in Australia. Uh, we are very proud of Kiru. Last year, he was the Bass Division Director as well. Uh, so this is a great year for him stepping up into the district leadership. Uh, he is currently responsible for supporting clubs to build, uh, which includes having club coaches, uh, having club mentors as well. Uh, and sponsors, so starting new clubs and helping clubs that are struggling. 
Uh, so he's got a different perspective around he's having to mentor his team this year as well as helping members take on these roles. But tonight he is talking about the benefits that he has found from being a mentor. So please join me in welcoming Kiru. Benefits of being a mentor. Benefits of being a mentor. Kiru. Thank you, Toastmaster Kayleen, or rather I would say thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Kayleen, and one person who always loved in this District 73 for her knowledge, her patience, and for the way that she handles people. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. Fellow Toastmasters, members of the Beric Toastmasters Club, lovely to meet you again after one month of break. Today, I am literally standing in front of you virtually to talk about the benefits a mentor gets by being a mentor. Now, before I do, before I could start, I just want to acknowledge why I was late and why I have to change the speaking slot is because I went all the way to RSL and came back realizing it's an online meeting. Good. But the good thing is that, the good thing is that why I said that is that the commitment which I have for Toastmasters for the organization, which gave me immense value in the growth I have attained today in my professional career. Now, before getting into the benefits of mentoring, I'd like to quickly run upon what is mentoring, what a mentor usually does. Even though Joe has slightly touched upon mentoring part of it, I'll give a little bit extra what a mentor usually do with a prodigy or mentee, which, I, which is mentee's easy word for me to say. I always felt that mentor takes higher advantage from the knowledge of mentee. I always felt like that. The reason is that mentor, mentee is not a student and a teacher relationship. It is a friend and a parent or a kind of a deep friend relationship. If I had to tell my mentors, some of the mentors whom I had are 25 years old and some are 60 years old as well. Now, I had a mentor who is literally 25 and he is a current regional, he was a past regional advisor for the region that was comprising Africa and the Middle East. His name is Sujit Sukumaran. I also had a mentor, or of course, I have Kaylin as my current mentor now. I also had before coming to Australia, I have another, I had another mentor who her name is Uma Radhakrishnan. She's about 55 years old. The kind of the kind of relation what we had is that we go for lunch together, we have we go for coffees. And when you go for coffees, we always talk about how we can be better in our project, how I can do better in our project, how can I be better in my own life. Sometimes when I get when I get when I lose my cool or lose my temper, they say, Kiru. You're too young to lose your temper. Your age to catch up. So that's the way they brought me here. That is the kind of relationship a mentor and a mentee we had. And that is the exact way I feel so any other mentor or mentee should have. It's a relationship. It's an ongoing relationship between a person and a person for them to grow together. That's one thing I would like to say about a relationship between a mentor. Second is a mentor and a mentee, it is not that always they had to go throughout their life. There could be a situation, a, pro, a mentor and a mentee relationship could be a project, which means that you start and there are chances you'll have to stop at some point. It could be a short project where I could help Manish in a particular project, or it could be a six to one year project where I could help any other person to deliver, to do their work, they say a club officer role properly. For an example, in Toastmasters, outside of Toastmasters, probably you can take, you could be a mentor for your own boss. I'm a mentor to my boss, who's my, who's my current manager. You might think like that. And he considers me as his mentor. And then I'm helping him how he can do his job properly in the next one year time so that he can achieve grade three or 3.5 in his yearly rating. That is also happening in today's world as well. That is mental. So it could start and end at a particular time. Next, a mentor-mentor mentor relationship is goal-based. 
short term, medium term, and a long term goal basis. In the short term, which means that in one month time, I want to achieve something like this. In three months time, I want to achieve this. On six months or one year time, I want to achieve this. So these are the three main aspects I would consider a mentor and a mentee or prodigy relationship should have. Now that I explained to you what is a mentor-mentee relationship, now I'll come to the main point, which I have the focus of my speech is the benefits of a men benefits a mentor takes. Now that I explained this relationship goal, you yourself are going to find out that you are becoming a project manager. You learn task, task completions. You learn what is milestones. Now that you got the experience, if you go and do, uh, go and read a project management book, oh, you will realize that, oh my God, what I did is nothing but a project management in the project man in the PMI, in the PMI world. Next, the benefit is that you get immense knowledge from the mentee. And you'll also realize how much you know, which you don't know. By speaking to John, then I realized, oh my God, I know so much, which I've been there in my mind, I didn't realize it. That's the second advantage. We get to know what we know more. And by helping others, by teaching others, we realize that we have learned more. And that knowledge gets registered in our mind better than we thought. These are the three main benefits, which I feel so the mentor is actually getting through the relationship process and from the mentee as well. Not, not, but, not the, but not the least. Bear in mind, mentee could be anyone who could be higher your grade. Like in my case, my manager is my mentee. He could share valuable information to you, back to you, because you have helped the mentee in the process. Knowledge is power. Wealth is not the power. Hence, embrace the mentor-mentee relationship. Choose a person whom you want to see grow. It could be your son, it could be a friend, or it could be a fellow Toastmaster. You mentor them, they grow, and you grow taller and higher than the mentee. With this, I'll hand over the stage or the virtual dice back to our Toastmaster of the evening, Distinguished Toastmaster Kaylin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kiru. Uh, lovely to hear from you. And Sujit, wonderful to hear that he was your one of your mentors. I served with him as a region advisor, and he's such a lovely gentleman. Uh, and I appreciate that you highlighted that age in a mentor is irrelevant. And I feel the same in Toastmasters. You do not have to have been in Toastmasters for 20 years to be a mentor. You just need to be a step ahead of the person that you're supporting. So thank you so much for sharing that, Kiru. If you've got any questions uh, that you might want uh, manage to see if you can weave into the panel discussion, please share them in chat. Uh, we are moving into the panel discussion. Thank you, Mandy, for stepping up. And I will acknowledge Grace because I've acknowledged all the other evaluators and I realised I never acknowledged Grace is evaluating John. So thank you, Grace, uh, for doing that. And we'll hear from Grace soon. But thank you, Mandy, for uh, coming to the meeting tonight and unexpectedly but with enthusiasm enthusiasm going, yes, I will evaluate the panel uh, discussion. And for those that don't know, Mandy kicked off our panel discussions in June at our changeover event. And since then, we've been having a panel discussion online every month. So you led the way, you started, Mandy, and we appreciate that. So we're going to, Manish is uh, stepping up today and doing the panel moderator role. Now, this is a level five project uh, that is an elective in all of the 11 learning paths. And he is doing it for motivational strategies uh, path today. And we, with this, uh, we have a 20, 22 minutes 
for the panel discussion. Manish, have you shared with Diane the timing for it? Uh, I haven't. I will share it with you, Diane. I'll message it to you. Thanks. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, so because it's a panel discussion, we kind of do timing a little bit different. We talk to the moderator and we set the timing lights based on what they want, what's going to help them best to stay on track during the session. So we have uh, our panellists will be our speakers. So I'm just going to start spotlighting. I've spotlighted Manish. I will spotlight John. I will spotlight uh, Joe, and you are seeing it's our speakers are our panelists. So our panelists today will be John, Joe, and Kiru, and Manish. Over to you to lead our panel discussion. Thank, thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, uh, <clears throat> thank you all, and it's it's a privilege to be hosting this panel discussion and especially on a, on a subject like mentoring. Uh, so mentoring personally for me is, is, is very close to my heart. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've seen the benefits both from being a mentee as well as a mentor. And uh, I think today on our panel, uh, we, we have distinguished folks uh, who, who are uh, in their speaking journey and uh, especially we heard from them uh, in detail about John, how how he brings the the commitment into into uh, into as a protege, and how you can get the best out of it. So, uh, uh, where we heard from Joe, how she brought her personal story and how how it helped her create uh, create a career, uh, and how 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 the how she channelized her motivation to create a career out of coaching, uh, and Kiru, uh, of course. Uh, uh, the 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 speaking and the leadership roles that he is always willing to take up and uh, is is always a pleasure to listen to, uh, uh, and we would love to hear more about uh, uh, how he has benefited out of uh, uh, being a, a mentor uh, per se. So yeah, I think that's that's a quick round of introduction and and how how about our distinguished panel. A uh, few few logistics. I think uh, I have received a lot of questions from everyone. So thank you so much for everyone who has shared these questions. It's very valuable, and I think this will this will make the session enriching. Uh, for the panelists, uh, just uh, a, a word. Uh, given that we have many questions, please do your best uh, to be concise and in your responses. If you can. Please share stories or examples from your journeys. I think that will help uh, resonate and uh, create connection with the people better. So those those are just a few words of advice. And with that, uh, uh, let me kick off. Maybe my first question. Uh, let me start with you, John. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I'm looking at it more from a perspective of a new postmaster member. Uh, and uh, as a member, I have uh, I'm really specific about what my uh, speaking goals are, right? Uh, in terms of when I'm joining Toastmaster. So, as a as a protege, uh, what would be your advice for someone about the process to find a mentor? If you could share some thoughts on that, I I think the first and and the like the key, main key point is. <clears throat> you need to find someone that you have a good relationship with. Um, being the scenario you're saying that you've just joined Toastmaster, it, it, it's going to be more on that first um, impression you get with people. But I, I'd be thinking about what, what specific goal I have in, in, in mind. Um, and then with the people that I've met, then look at, you know, who I feel actually is doing or has achieved what, what I'm hoping to achieve so I can go learn and, and practice with them. Yeah, I think uh, 
very valuable advice, John. Uh, look for look for those examples which you want to build upon uh, around yourself and and uh, leverage that to find your mentor. So thank you for sharing that. Maybe uh, building upon that and a question to uh, uh, Kiru. Uh, as as a as as a mentor, uh, how do you know uh, you you are you are uh, ready to men mentor someone? And uh, if I can add, uh, how do you find if someone approaches you? How do you kind of go about the process of uh, uh, really evaluating and building up the mentor mentee relationship? So I'll answer your first question in the chronal on the first or the first thing. How do I know I'm ready for mentor? Is that anyone should be ready to help a mentor on a short-term process of the first thing. Say, for example, for a single speech or for a single event or for a single exam or for a single event. So if uh, I'll take a, a very good example. If Joe has not mentored anyone yet, so she should start today. If you have not mentored anyone today, you should start the next day. And uh, that's the example which I would, uh, that's the example, that, that's the answer which I would say. Now, the second question, if you could repeat, I forgot while I was answering the first one, could you please? I think my follow-on question was, uh, as a mentor, let's say, if someone approaches you, how do you, how do you uh, know that, uh, uh, how do you evaluate uh, uh, whether you want to build a relationship or whether you yeah, want to sure. continue mentoring. I'll give you a, um, a two standard approach for this one, a selfish approach, second, a non-selfish approach. First of all, um, anything we do, we should ensure that there's some benefit coming for everyone that includes us as well. So no one is going to do a, a charity work, losing something, everyone will gain something. First, a selfish answer is that the name mentee comes, you, you find out what you can learn from the mentee also. Say for example, if John comes to me, I would definitely be sure that I will learn how I will all in, 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 in rapport, I will learn how to behave with small kids, how to encourage them. If Joe comes to me as a mentee, and I will say, okay, um, I will find out what are the new tricks and traits I can learn about coaching. Point number one. So once you know that you're going to get benefit from the mentee on a different angle, then automatically you will have the Motivation to go and help him back. So that is the first approach. Second approach is that when the person asks for specific help, first of all, be honest that are you a credible person to help him? Say for an example, if John comes and asks me, hey Kiro, I want to I, I want to build up on more on how to be uh, how to teach kindergarten kids kinder, kindergarten kids better. Now, at that point, I'm not a credible person there because I had never been with kindergarten kids. So here, I would say, I really say, John, John, I'm not the right person to mentor because mentor's role is to ensure that you give a specific goal in a timely manner and achieve something and build and reduce the knowledge gap for the mentee. So if I'm not credible, I will not. But however, on the other side, if John comes and asks me, John, Akiru, I want to do a speech Wherein I want to use my, um, I want to use the mechanism of a body movement, stage usages, and facial expressions. There, I will be a solid win and a credible person because of my past experience. So that's how I will engage in a selfish way and a non-selfish way. Thank that's you, Pat Manish. Thanks, thanks, Keru. Uh, that that's a really practical way to look at it uh, from from the perspective of uh, for mentor. Uh, so uh, moving on, and uh, uh, Joe, I'll come to you on this one. Uh, uh, you, you, you talked about coaching and, and how uh, 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 you, you developed it uh, as a career. Uh, so if you can share uh, through your practical experience, how, how, or if you came across a situation, how did you help someone you are coaching to kind of step outside their shell, right? Because many a times people don't know what to expect. So, as as a coach, uh, how how did you uh, 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 address that aspect? Beautiful question. And I think it starts. Well, actually, I know it starts. It doesn't start in that moment. It starts perhaps way back 
So we're looking at what I call the roots of the system. Again, it's like swimming. So if I can share it in that way as a metaphor, if um, if you've experienced, if you can swim, you are either somebody at some point would have helped you get into that water. Now that can feel like hand holding in a coaching situation where again, it's very difficult to like the, the line between whether there's a gap in their knowledge. Um, it, you know, it depends on each person, but really taking them from practicing how to move forward in a, I'm going to say a controlled situation, some, somewhere that they're comfortable in, we're then moving out to somebody. So perhaps, for example, is a, um, a really difficult discussion that perhaps they need to have with their um, boss in work or maybe their partner. And it's about role playing that discussion first so they get comfortable in their in what they want to say, even if it's not, you know, they don't actually say exactly what is role played, but they go through the motions and can visualize how sort of what it might feel like, look like, and kind of really cover all bases. But more than anything is that they feel comfortable with going through the motions as opposed to inside thinking oh I've got to do this conversation got to do this conversation and it's going to be awful because I've got to tell him this I've got to tell him that or whatever the inner critic inner chatter in our head says but when we actually speak it and practice it it actually becomes oh yeah I can do that yeah okay cool and then they go off and it just flows really beautiful that's been my experience with my clients anyway Thank you, Joe, for sharing. Um, I'm sure your uh, clients clients are benefiting benefiting out of uh, out of this relationship. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, moving on, and uh, uh, John, if I can come to you, I know uh, you, you you have been in roles where you have been a protege and you have also been a mentor, right? Yep. So uh, I think the question here uh, is: Did being a protege first? help you when becoming a mentor? Um, I think, yeah, it, it, it will, will have helped. Um, I, I guess the reason why it took me a while to just think about it is, <clears throat> as I said earlier, like my first experience in my career where there was no protege there was no mentoring done for me but um I had lots of opportunities for mentoring in the workplace like to mentor other people because everyone went well you've got the highest qualification and I'd have students come and things like that but then as I've gone on like through the Freemasonry um and at the church and even here at Toastmasters having that opportunity where I've been able to learn from someone else, that's helped me to go, oh, I actually, you know, I know how to do this. I can actually help someone else do that. Yeah, I might not be um, at the same level as, you know, someone who's been around like Kiru or Kayleen for years, and but I've got enough experience to, because of, um, like the protege help has helped because I've had that experience in my early times, particularly here at Toastmasters. So, you know, it really helped made it, uh, you know, I didn't even think twice when I was asked about going into mentoring because of that, you know, the experience I had had. Yeah. No, I think, uh, John, that's that's extremely powerful. Uh, whenever as a protege, you, you learn certain things, uh, being able to crystallize that and, and, uh, leverage them as as teachings for others benefit i think that's that's extremely powerful so thanks for sharing that uh, uh if i can uh, uh, move to you kiru uh, uh if i were to ask you what what is one thing you didn't realize you knew until you discovered it through a mentor protege relationship i mean what what is that self discovery for you 
Yeah, it's a um, straightforward question. The self discovery is that I have more leadership skills than what I thought in the year 2006. I, will, I always realized that I was a very arrogant person. Arrogant, I repeat the word arrogant person until 2005. And in the year 2006, I was introduced to Toastmasters. That's when um, I thought like, I can't speak very well in front of 10 people. I can't, um, I don't have leadership skills. I'll always be a software engineer, never be, never be able to move to leadership aspect. But it was in Toastmasters, it, I realized that um, I have more leadership skills within, within myself, which I'd never realized it. Even though I sport a lot, of, even though I played a lot of um, soccer, hockey, and um, badminton when I was young, sports make, makes you a natural leader. That's why I realized it. So it was through my mentor, Ramnath um, and Ganesh Raman back in India. They're very good mentors. Um, they are the ones that if you have more leadership skills, um, Kiruba, start honing on that. That's when I took Sergeant at Arms role very seriously. Sergeant at Arms role in a club is the best way or the best gateway to go into the leadership role. If you do the Sergeant at Arms role very well, you will reach anywhere. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kiru. Uh... I think, yeah, the, this process of self-discovery in terms of what you are not and what you are, I think being able to, to, to kind of uh, understand both dimensions of your personality, I think are, 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 are a really important aspect. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, Joe, for the next one, if I can come to you. Uh, As a coach, uh, how have you benefited from mentoring? I know there, there is a nuance between coaching and mentoring, right? So if you can draw upon uh, that aspect and, uh, and share how the benefits uh, look like. It is, a, it is a very fine line to be able to pull back from, you know, actually telling somebody or sharing that, that knowledge. Um, I think for me personally, because of what I mentor in, which is um, nervous system regulation, it really, the benefits, I can't even, I can't even put into words how immensely life-changing these strategies that I teach people are, because it is a life skill that will serve them for the rest of their lives. I teach them and I share with them strategies that they can use, but we do it in a way that suits them because my strategies are not what they want to use, but we tailor it so it really fits in with their life, what they like doing, what resonates with them. And will, again, ultimately last them for life, not just, you know, for the hour in the session or whatever, for lifelong. So I think because of what we've all gone through with, you know, when we had the world pause and fear was a really driving factor, um, this um, mentoring for me has been completely game-changing to watch my clients really flourish in life and know that they are flourishing sustainably. They, they don't need me. And that is, it's heartbreaking for me because they go and do their own thing. <laughs> but, but, but so beautiful. So that's what I think. Thank you, Joe, for sharing that. And uh, I think we, we just have time about for one more question. So I'll uh, have a common question to the all three of you. And if you can share your perspectives on that. Uh, how do you know when a, when a mentor, coach, or protégé relationship is ready to end? So, yeah, we can start with you, John, and then move on. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Only because, um, like, at the moment, um, I have got three mentees um, or protégés. Um, I, I, I guess... Probably, probably um, one of the things is, like, I try to give um, my protégés, you know, a bit of that power as in, you know, like, when, you know, when do you want mentoring? 
you know, and like, you know, let me know. So that way, you know, I'll work in as best as I can um, rather than going, right, we're going to meet every, you know, fourth Tuesday or whatever, you know, letting the mentor, uh, the men, the protege take that. Um, and, and I guess, you know, when, when is it time for it to end? I'm, I, I think it's probably more so around the time when, you know, the, the protege is really not looking for that support anymore. Um, or they may, you know, it could also be that they're actually starting to want things that are beyond my skills, which I haven't had yet, but, um, I guess they would be the two things either that you know, they're signifying that, yep, yeah, you know, they've achieved what they have set out or that they're looking for something new. And that means that they may need to move to a new mentor. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, you, uh, my simple answer is that you will have an intuition that you're not enjoying your mentoring. So when you realize that you're not enjoying your mentoring, it is. It means that the mentee is also not enjoying your mentoring progress, uh, mentoring uh, sessions. Um, you will know the intuition. So once you, once you know that intuition, I think you should gradually don't burn the bridge, don't burn the friendship. Gradually start to say that looks like I had given what I should and uh, you achieved your pinnacle. From my perspective, if you want to if you want to reach beyond that point, I think you need a better mentor. And then you start as a mentor, you should give them the opportunity uh, if you feel like that. If the mentee says, no, no, I still enjoy, then you continue. If the mentee says, oh, okay, then I'll be, then it's more ahead, then which means that it is a natural point that you should go, you should um, uh, do a handshake and then hand over the mentee to a better mentor. And then... Um, where I find another mentee and then start helping him. This is my natural. You will get an intuition immediately. If I don't like, if men, manage, if I don't like ment mentoring you, if you don't realize it, I will have intuition. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Kiru. And uh, Joe, your last thoughts on this one. So I think for, for me as a coach, people usually reach out to me. Um, to start that coaching um, agreement. And um, I really resonate with the saying from Nanny McPhee, if anyone's familiar with that, um, when you need me, but do not want me, then I must stay. But when you want me, but no longer need me, then I must go. Um, and I think that sits really well with me. Um, and I think really, we both in that coaching agreement, we both know, and um, it is a heartbreaking parting, <laughs> but it is so beautiful that birds must fly away from the nest, go be in the world, do your thing, make a difference, make that ripple effect. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joe, for sharing that. I think that's that's an apt way to uh, to summarize uh, uh, how to how to look at the journey. Uh, I mean, let let me quickly summarize my three takeaways or top takeaways from this enriching conversation. I think my first uh, key takeaway, uh, with which I really loved, was uh, uh, in evaluating whether you can be a mentor. Be honest to yourself find if you can really help and then develop the relationship. So I think that was one kind of golden nugget for me. Uh, the second one that that uh, I, I loved was, uh, uh, Joe, your process about uh, how to get people out of the shell, shell uh, and help them test out different strategies in a simulated control situation, make them comfortable and, and hold their hand through the journey. Uh, and and the last one that that uh, I, I I loved was really the point from Kiru about yeah it's just intuition at the end of the day so follow your intuition it's never going to fail you so thank you all so much for sharing your valuable insights uh, and uh, yeah thank you everyone for participating I think the questions uh, all credits go to the audience because they are all questions coming from 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 the audience here. So thank you Seth, so much everyone for participating. And with that, Kayleen, I hand it over back to you. 
Thank you, Manish, John, Joe, and Kiru. Yay! And I'll just remove that because I really didn't want to stay on spotlight, but I worked out that was the quickest way to undo a panel discussion. Thank you all. Uh, well done, Manish. That was your first time doing a panel moderation. Uh, so great job. Uh, and thank you for John, Joe, and Kiru. Uh, for continuing uh, to share your wisdom as panellists. We're now uh, moving on to the evaluation section of our meeting. Everything we do in Toastmasters, we like to receive feedback because we learn what we're doing well through the feedback and opportunities for us to improve and grow with the feedback. I am going to run the evaluation as per it is kind of on the agenda with the name changes. So I'm going to start with Grace, then Sarinda, then Manish, and then Mandy. Got that order right? Perfect. Uh, so it's two to three minutes, uh, and we'll, we'll probably end up going closer to nine o'clock tonight. So we'll see how we go with um, finishing this meeting. Uh, but let's hear from... Our first evaluator, Grace, who is evaluating John. Over to you, Grace. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you so much, John, for sharing your insights on what it means to be a protege and your experiences. I really loved as well that you gave some contrast to when you didn't have a mentor at all and what that looked like. So we really got the full experience and the full journey that you went on through that. A couple of areas uh, that I think we we could improve on. Uh, one main thing, and I think it probably goes for everyone, likely including me right now, though I'm unawares, is that being online with a meeting, your microphone picks up sounds that in a normal Toastmaster setting, we wouldn't hear. <laughs> so little things like tongue clicks come out quite a lot louder than you would normally expect. And I just did one right then because I was thinking about it. And I'm sure that will go on the recording for later. <clears throat> the other thing that I thought we can all, we could improve on with yours, John, and I noticed it a little bit in the panel discussion as well, was at the end of your points or your sentences, occasionally you'd trail off or you'd add an extra that sort of thing, or you know what I mean, or like this. And it almost takes away from your awesome point that you've just finished. There are other times where you did really well with those pauses though, so I don't want to take away from that. And we could really see that that point and that story within your journey had finished and we were moving on to the next one. And that was really beautiful when you nailed that. If I was looking to enhance the speech a little bit, I'd probably also put in a one-line message to revisit uh, throughout your journey, throughout those different stories that you were able to provide, just to nail it right at the end and, and have that one key takeaway. There were a lot of different takeaways from your speech, though, and there was a lot that I still was able to take notes on and, <laughs> and take away from it. To finish up, I just want to summarise some of the other really great things that you did. The introduction was awesome. It really warmed up the audience and gave a, an understanding of not just what you were going to present, but also who you are and what you bring to the table as a protege. Your hand gestures were visible, which is really hard again on online meetings. So having your hands up visible uh, was really adding to that, that explanation and it was really great to see and you always do a beautiful job of that. And as always, your projection, your volume, your articulation is really easy to understand and it really gives for a great speech delivery. And with that, I will say thank you again, John, and hand back to Kayleen. Thank, thank you, Grace, and I am sure that John will be able to take value from your words tonight for his next presentation. I am now going to invite Sarinda 
our next evaluator, who is evaluating Kiru. Over to you, Surinder. Thank you, Gailene. And Kiru, first said, at the outset itself, I'd like to congratulate you for some very useful content. I know for one that I gained a lot from what you said today, and I hope that everyone else on this call gained the same. I think what I liked especially was that you actually eased in to what you were telling us today. You used your sort of lateness for the meeting as a, as a little bit of an ease in point, so it was quite conversational as opposed to a very structured sort of stiff approach that you used. And you eased in by talking about com commitment. But then you also demonstrated what I thought was very good structure. You spoke also of the short term, the medium term, the long term. You used the, what I like to call the one, two, three. That, that gives the, the sort of perception of structure as well. On the technical points, Kiru, I really liked your hand gestures. It wasn't just hand gestures for the sake of hand gestures, but they were, I thought, quite pointed and technical, but at the same time, very easy in terms of in terms of very comfortable was what I wanted to say. Uh, you also came across as extremely competent and just by the demonstration of that competence, I think you established authority. And given what you were talking about today, I thought that authority was actually something that was essential and I thought you accomplished this in a very good way. As a result, I also thought that you built towards what was clearly to me inspirational. So congratulations on that. Um, I think that was very nicely done. Kiru, I just had two points that were suggestions for improvement from my perspective. The first one was technical. And on the technical aspect, I think it was just really minor, but just a tweaking, a very minor tweaking of this, I think could really demonstrate a complete transformation. And that was that I believe you probably have your camera placed at an angle because to me, you seemed to be looking at an angle and you were looking at the same angle almost consistently. So I, I wonder where your camera is, but my suggestion is perhaps just look towards just below the top of your, your computer screen. That might be one way of connecting with the audience eye contact. It's a tricky space here on, online, uh, but that's just the only technical point. The other one is on content. And that is that you said, by helping others, we learn more. And I, and I completely agreed with that. And I understood exactly what you were driving at. But despite the fact that I understood it, I would have actually liked you to possibly flesh that out a little bit more by telling us what you really mean by that and demonstrating perhaps through example. But that's a very minor sort of critical perspective of feedback, Kiru. On the whole, I think you were really fabulous today, like I said, it was a demonstration of absolute technical competence. You established that authority and you came across as not just believable, but you gave us content that I think we took away saying, I'm going to use this. And as a result, like I said, inspirational. So congratulations. Kayleen, over to you. Thank you, Sarinda. And... Uh... I am also evaluating Surinder, so I will be doing that after the meeting and providing that to him as part of the evaluation and feedback project. The third part of that is being an evaluator and getting evaluated, so that's happening today. But great feedback that I am confident that Kiru will be taking notes himself and, and thinking, right, I'm going to do this different and this different next time, so valuable uh support and feedback egg as with we what we had from Grace as well. So now we're moving on to Manish providing some feedback to for Joe's presentation. So over to you Manish. Thank you. Thank you, Kelleen. And uh, uh, it, it's my privilege to evaluate uh, uh, Postmaster Joe for a presentation speech today. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let let me uh, start with a quote, uh, and uh, so so uh, wherever smiles show up, wherever smiles show up, joy is soon to follow. And I think this kind of aptly meets how Joe started her speech. Uh, to me, the moment you open a speech with a smile. Uh, I mean, for me, the rest of it was was pure joy. So, so 
जो कंटिन्यू डूइंग दैट आई थिंक दैट दैट्स दैट्स अ रियली गुड वे एंड पावरफुल वे टू टू स्टार्ट सो 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 दैट्स पॉइंट नंबर वन द सेकंड ऑब्जर्वेशन आई हैव व्हिच व्हिच आई वांट टू कमेंड यू ऑन इज द यूज ऑफ वोकल वैरायटी एंड आई आई नो वी रफली we have joined the toast master near about at the same time and and been through our journey together but the way i see you using uh, uh, expressions and vocal variety uh, and i i think uh, i was closely observing them today and there were few instances like one instance was where you were describing the different uh, moods of a rugby coach right when he is feeling good when he is feeling bad when he is feeling angry Uh, the 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 vocal variety that you use to kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, bring to life the different uh, nuances i think that that was good i think your use of uh, not just your hand gestures but your facial gestures your expressions with eyes i think they were all kind of complementing each other and and i think that that added a powerful uh, kind of uh, uh, that complemented your story powerfully well so so that was my uh, second feedback and the third feedback which which uh, uh, i i really loved about was again establishing a personal connection with people i think by sharing your personal story and how you came about uh, and got drew, drawn into this profession what you went through and uh, and uh, uh, how we, how you reached the point where you are at right now i think that that personal story was really compelling uh, in in my mind and i think that established a very good personal connection so the those to me were were were, were the three uh, uh, positives uh, if i were to uh, share you uh, uh, one area that uh, uh, you could work upon further uh, to me it would be uh, linking the different sections of your speech and being able to help users or audience transition seamlessly i to me that seemed to be kind of the only uh, potential area where you could build upon to to help uh, uh, people navigate the speech uh, uh, well so i think all in all uh, jo congratulations it's a great speech a great topic and yeah, something that i really love to hear thank you thank you manish uh lots of positive commendations there we we can thrive on knowing what our strengths are and what we're doing well uh so fantastic sharing those gems plus an opportunity to improve so well done manish our final evaluator today is recently crowned an effective coach level 2 as well <laughs> i'll keep celebrating so we're <laughs> proud of you mandy uh is mandy who's evaluating manish with the panel discussion over to you mandy it's a thank you manish for having such a great topic uh for uh, for a, a for a panel mentoring is very important and it's it's something that gets us through the through our um toastmaster experience and being a mentor or a mentee is all part of that along with having some coaches involved as well i really love the way you set the the tone the topic and allowed the 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 panelists to understand that they only needed to do their best so there was no massive amount of pressure put on them and you also asked them to keep it concise because you had lots of questions so that you you premised that you had lots of questions and you wanted them to keep it concise and which they all did very well so that was that was really good i love the way that when you heard their answers you summarized it so that the rest of us could understand or make sure that we heard the points that that we had and that worked i found that that worked really well Uh the questions that you asked were also really good. I don't know how many were from the from the group and versus your your own but it was it you put them all together very well. Uh and you could see that there was some research and some thought in 
that you you put you had done it to, to get those those questions and just the way that you were able to structure it all that they each got some time to speak and that last one being allowing them all to answer one question it, it just worked really well it was a very good structure and at the end as well when you summarized and gave us all the three t key takeaways that you that you um took out of it so it gave us time to think about it for ourselves what we might also have got out of it but you were giving giving those sort of hints something to to think about is i found that you're you're umming and ahhing quite a lot and that instead of umming and ahhing you could be doing a some pauses and thinking a bit more about what you're saying and, and maybe practicing it in your head a little bit more. Still, even to, in saying that, it was a fantastic panel, really loved the topic. And you could see that you had had demonstrated, you dem definitely demonstrated what you needed it to for tonight. So thank you for, for that and um, keep going. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Manny, and some valuable tips there for Manish, but also for all of us when we put our hand up to be a panel moderator at an upcoming member mentoring session online. Now, before I invite Lily to share her theme for the next meeting, uh, I'd like to take a photo uh, so, Karen, if you're still there, love to see your gorgeous face as well. Uh, I hope everybody's happy with me taking a photo. If you don't, you can drop off. Everyone's got their hair gorgeous. We're all, of course, we're all gorgeous. Sorinda, you've got one out of place. Hang on a minute. John? No, not, not uh, okay. All right. Stop being cheeky. All right. Rest smiling. Perfect. One, two, three. Okay, I have no idea what that's going to look like, um, but I'll share it in the in the club WhatsApp group so that we all get to see it. So thank you very much for that. Uh, it, before I go to Lily, Manish, if you did have other questions that came through from the audience and questions from yourself, please keep them. It's a great opportunity to turn them into table topics questions at an upcoming club meeting. And I know we have a one of our, uh, well, we actually have our two November Toastmasters here. Grace is going to do the 14th of November and Joe is doing the 28th of November. Um, and who knows, maybe one of them might have a theme uh, that might be suitable for some of those questions. Uh, no pressure, ladies, you don't have to. <laughs> At some point, there will be a theme that will be suitable for those questions. So, Lily, uh, would you like, you are our Toastmaster for our next meeting at Berwick RSL. Uh, would you like to share your theme and talk about your meeting? Yes. So my theme for the 26th is Protect Your Energy. Um, so we've got a couple of um, roles that are vacant. We've got the role of the grammarian and timekeeper. And if anyone wants to sign up for that, either let me know or go on the club website and do it there. Um, also, if you are doing a speech on the 26th, please update the, the sheet. And if you have any questions or any issues, please let myself know, or you can let Kayleen know if you have any issues. Other than that, um, well done everyone for their presentation today. It was lovely to hear you all speak as usual. Um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Lily. That's the first time Lily has um, done her next meeting promo for a Toastmaster. We've had a number. Who did something new today for the first time? Show of hands. Yep, Grace, Kiru, Manish, Joe, Philip, Lily. Karen's here for the first time. Dian, you're a veteran and you've only just joined. Isn't this your second time doing online <laughs> second already? Second time, yes. 
you're a veteran already <laughs> fantastic and Sarinda you you've been been here done that Mandy's been here done that before as, as well but thank you thank you all for being here um our next member mentoring online session will be in October uh Kiru will be our panel moderator then. Sarinda and myself are speakers. And I might have an outside speaker unless I get a, somebody uh, within the club, but I'm looking for um, a guest to come in and be part of that panel. And then our panel, our November session we have John Von Guy and we have a guest, Rebecca Plush, who some of you have met before, that will be our speakers. But I am looking for a panel moderator for the November meeting. And for October meeting and November, I'm looking for the Toastmaster of the meeting. Uh, there is an opportunity that I will uh, talk to John more about and he can announce at the club meeting on the next club meeting in his role as president. But uh, something that has come to me as vice president of education is that there is going to be a demonstration meeting for Lynbrook Club uh, coming up uh, on the 16th of October. I'm not sure what day of the week that is. Uh, Kiru, what day of the week is the 16th? You're on mute. It's on the 16th of October. Yeah, Monday. It's a Monday. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. I'm glad everybody quit. Like I could have checked, but no. So it's on the Monday. Uh, so if you, if you, if Monday is a day that you don't have anything on, uh, keep your ears out for this because an opportunity to go to a different venue and to help uh, with a demonstration meeting is something, you know, you don't want to miss. It's a great opportunity. So we'll talk more about that uh, soon. Karen, as our visitor, yes, you've just put a, a, a note in the chat. Did you want to take yourself off mute and just uh, share a thought before I wrap up? Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is actually my second online meeting. Uh, I've been actually coming for a little while. Uh, I should say a little while four sessions now uh, I've actually quite enjoyed it I'm getting closer and closer uh, about joining uh, you guys are awful I mean awful <laughs> wonderful is what I'm trying to say <laughs> well at least I get some laugh out of you guys so that's at least I know you're listening <laughs> um, so thank you so much for having me and inviting me along and always making me feel welcome it's been such a pleasure and it's been such a learning experience and Everything that you do is amazing. Everything that you're doing, whether it's, you know, um, presenting or feedback or moderating, any every opportunity you get is actually a lesson learn, a learning um, item. So I love that and um, I'm eager. That's yeah. all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you are more than welcome to join the club. Uh I'll communicate with you uh, offline as well and would love to see you at our next meeting. Uh, Diane, would you like to say a word and then I will definitely close off and we will be out of here before 9 o'clock. <laughs> and you, we need Kaylin. to hear your voice on the recording. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. Yeah, it, was, it was really awesome to watch all the speakers, all the evaluators, what they say, what they views about this one so i really enjoyed this session today and this is my kind of first proper online timekeeper as last time two weeks ago i think it was just you know i was just uh kind of put my hands up because no one uh was a timekeeper so yeah thank you for having me for tonight as timekeeper and listen to all of you Th thank you for stepping up. Timekeeper is one of the hardest jobs, I think, because I always get so drawn into what people are saying that I forget the, forget the clock. Uh, Diane is doing her icebreaker next week at, at oh, the yeah. club meeting, uh, our newest member to the club. So thank you, everybody, for being part of our member mentoring. Thank you to our speakers, our evaluators, our moderators. You have all made this night possible. I will be stopping the recording now and then we'll upload it uh, in the next day or two to our YouTube channel.